Normally in my videos, I try to provide a fair, unbiased, reasonable, accurate assessment of all the cars I examine. Not today. That's because today I am reviewing my all-time favorite car, the Porsche Carrera GT. It is the single greatest car ever made. I'm driving this car at Porsche of Beechwood near Cleveland, Ohio, which is now my favorite car dealership of all time. They graciously offered to let me drive it, despite the fact that they have it listed for sale right now for $699,000. Let me repeat that, $699,000. This car is worth twice as much as my house, and I have recessed lighting and exposed bricks. So how could it possibly be worth $699,000? Well, this is normally part where I'd launch into the car's quirks, but the Carrera GT requires a little bit of an explanation first. And here it is. I truly believe that in the future, when all cars drive themselves and they're electric and automated and vehicles are something to be used like a bottle of hand sanitizer, future generations will look back at the Carrera GT as the single pinnacle of the automobile. I really believe that every supercar that came before it, the McLaren F1, the Ferrari F40, the Porsche 959, the Lamborghini Miura, all were marks on the way up the hill to the Carrera GT, which stands at the top, unrivaled. And since then, things have kind of been diminishing. The reason? This is the last supercar that really truly puts the driver in control and requires skill and precision to operate to its limits. Today's exotic supercars have automatic transmissions and all-wheel drive and hybrid powertrains and electronic nannies. This thing didn't even have stability control, which is now mandated by the federal government. It's the last true supercar with a stick shift. There have been some high-profile accidents in this car and some high-profile deaths and some high-profile lawsuits. And no automaker with any sort of decent, reasonable legal department will ever go near anything like this again. It is the last best vehicle of its kind, period. Of course, I might be a little biased. I first got up close with the Carrera GT 11 years, one month and 25 days ago, and I've been obsessed with it ever since. There's only one car model on my desk, and it's a Carrera GT. Open a random closet in my house and you'll find Carrera GTs. I could barely sleep last night knowing I was gonna come here today, and now I get to drive one. Did I mention how much I love Porsche of Beechwood, located at 25855 Chagrin Boulevard in Beechwood, Ohio? Before I get behind the wheel, let's get into the quirks. It certainly has a few. For example, the gear lever is right next to the steering wheel. It was for speed. The theory was if you were on a racetrack and you had to shift, you could just go instead of having to reach all the way down here somewhere. And then there's the fact that the center lock wheel nuts are blue on the passenger side and red on the driver's side, so you don't accidentally screw the wrong one in to the wrong side. Which is important because on one side it's left-handed threads and on the other side it's right-handed threads. And then there's the roof, which came in two pieces. And was designed to fit in the front trunk. Somehow. Also in the trunk is the center lock nut remover for the center lock wheels. I can only imagine what this part would sell for. Also unusual, the doors have a hidden inside pocket where you could put whatever you want to hide. Even I didn't know about this until we were filming this video and we accidentally opened it. Then there's the awesome rear wing which raises at 70 miles an hour or with the push of a button up front. And then there's the engineering, which I could go on about for days. The carbon fiber tub and subframe, the inboard suspension, but I won't bore you with all that. Instead, here's an interesting anecdote about the Carrera GT's engine. When the Carrera GT was first shown as a concept car, it had a 5.5 liter V10 with 558 horsepower. This was the craziest thing Porsche could have dreamed up to make a concept car. Except, when they put the road version together, it actually had a 612 horsepower, 5.7 liter V10. In other words, the concept car, which didn't have to conform to regulations, which could have been anything Porsche wanted in its wildest dreams, actually had less power than the one they made for you to drive. And boy, does that engine sound good. All right, go for it. Woo! 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 
But maybe the biggest quirk of the Carrera GT is its clutch. Unlike in virtually every single other manual transmission car ever made, in the Carrera GT, when you let off the clutch, you have to let it almost completely all the way up before you start pushing the accelerator. If you ever drive a Carrera GT, you will either stall it or burn up the clutch, period. And now I'm going to drive it. Did I mention how much I love Porsche of Beechwood? Open Monday through Saturday, starting at 9 a.m. Okay, here we go. All right, now we're gonna do this clutch thing. <laughs> this is so bizarre. All right, so let it off and then it starts going. Indeed it does. How weird, it's so weird, it's so weird. Oh my God, I'm trying to encourage you to. Driving through a parking lot. This is, this, is the, this is the most intense I've ever driven, I've ever felt driving through a parking lot. The seat is not, as, is not as tight as I was expecting, by the way. God, the mirrors are enormous. They take up, between the mirror and the A pillar, how do you see that way? Right. The thing that's interesting is nobody pays attention. If we were driving that Murcielago, these people would be taking pictures. Yeah, yeah. But Carrera GT is a little bit know. subtler, and I love that. I think yeah. that's so cool. You're driving maybe the greatest car of all time, and like nobody realizes it. It's a, the ride is very harsh. Instantly, you can tell the ride is harsh. This is a serious car. God, this is crazy. This is so totally insane. This car's worth seven hundred thousand dollars. Wait, it sounds very mechanical. I was warned of that. It's it's not like a uh, 911 where it's really refined or a Cayenne. It's like a race car, and it's, it, it sounds like it. You hear everything. You know, for all the crap the clutch gets, once you get going, it's actually really easy to operate. The gear lever is actually pretty easy too. The car isn't that intimidating once you get going, but it is hard to remember how to activate that clutch so you don't burn it. You have to be very careful each first gear start that you don't screw it up. Especially knowing that a replacement clutch is, what, like 30, $30 $25,000. Yeah, that's... Wow. God, that's about a quarter throttle. <laughs> a lot of Porsches, you gotta ring out to get to the torque. This thing, it doesn't feel like that. So there's no stability control, and the biggest button in the center console is traction control off. match. I don't feel as intimidated driving the car as I expected to. The mirrors are surprisingly big. They actually like, you'd think there's visibility to be compromised, but the mirrors, you can see everything. The car is not that uh, intimidating at low speeds. It feels fairly normal, but the ride is punishing. You gotta be like, yeah, I'm ready to drive my Carrera GT now. The gear lever is like nice and easy to work. And I always thought it'd be weird because it kind of comes down on the center console, but actually it feels natural when you're driving and it feels totally fine. Boy, at idle, there's no rumbling. This car is so well engineered. The clutch isn't tremendously heavy, it's just weird. So you can do it, it's, it's a linear motion, it feels fine, it's just that it's this strange thing you gotta remember. It doesn't sound inside anywhere near as good as it sounds on the outside, the exhaust note. Like, it, you can hear it, it's mechanical, you know what's going on, there's an engine right. happening. But on the outside, it sounds like a race car. I'm blown away by how easy the gear changes are once you're moving. All this stuff about the clutch only applies if the car is stopped. I am cognizant of the fact that it's incredibly valuable when I drive it. Not so much as the Ford GT though. I don't think that the appearance of this car when you're in it makes you think $700,000 car. Boy, the, it, it revs so quickly that yeah, you'd get used to it, but the, the uh, rev matches are incredibly easy. And that ride is loud. Every, every aspect of the car is loud. You can hear everything that goes on in the engine. You hear the gear changes. You hear the tires on the pavement. This is not a quiet car. This car was not made to cruise around. Boy, the handling is, the turn, turning is really quick. explosive power. Oh my god. That's crazy. Wow. Oh my god. Man, when you're really on it, the power and the sound. Insane. Totally insane. I mean, the steering, I, I'm not taking a lot of turns. We don't have a lot of turns on here, but the steering rack is tremendously quick. There's no body roll. Yeah. I mean, you can just tell the car is obviously set up so perfectly for turning and steering. Right, right. The thing that I came away
away with this thinking is that this is like a big 9-11, a more athletic, more excited 9-11, a 9-11 that's like, have fun with me. I really thought this car would be intimidated and I'd be scared, incredibly scared driving it, but I don't feel that way. I, I feel like it wants to have fun, like all Porsches do. You can be goaded in this car, I think, into doing something you don't want to do simply because of, of how easy to drive it is. So aside from that clutch thing, this car is so simple to get on the road and have fun with, you really can feel a little bit overconfident in this car, I think. So there it is. I've shown you around the Carrera GT and I've gotten to drive my all-time favorite dream car and the greatest car ever made. For more of my thoughts, and there are many more thoughts, click the link below to check out my column on autotrader.com slash oversteer.